Picture this, you're losing to the same sweats every single month. You're trying to push to the top 10K, you're trying to push to ultimate ladder, you're trying to win that grand or classic challenge every single month, but you can't. You keep losing. You're constantly switching decks every single month with a new evolution coming out with a new busted card, but you can't win with your new deck. You couldn't win with your old deck, you can't win with your new deck, and you think it's your deck that's the problem, but really, it's you. You keep on telling your friends that you're gonna get that top 10k finish. You keep on telling your friends you're gonna win that grand challenge, but in all reality, you keep on getting stuck in master three or at three wins in your grand challenge. I mean, whoop de doo how exciting. You keep on trying to break out of your mid ladder cycle you're trying to break out of your mid ladder mindset but in all reality you, you just keep on getting trashed by players that are just overall better than you they keep on outplaying you and there's nothing you can really do about it even when you have a hard counter you don't stand a chance ever since i've been on this youtube scene i've noticed that there are lots of pro players that will be willing to give you their gameplay. They might tell you niche interactions here and there and how to win this certain matchup on a very rare occasion, but they never tell you how they got to that point. They never tell you how they became a top five player in the world. They never told you how they won their first 10 grand challenges. They never told you why they are as successful as they are. So today I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to actually get good at Clash Royale. So with that being said, here are eight tips to get you on the right track to being a better player in Clash Royale. My first tip is to not switch your deck every single month. You're going to see YouTubers all over the place say that, oh, you need to be using this new evolution. You need to be using this card that just got buffed. You need to stop using this card that just got nerfed. And some of this may be true. Like the Goblin Giant was very good over the last couple of months but you can't do that. You don't have all your cards upgraded, and even if you do, you don't know how to use the Goblin Giant as well as some of the pros do. All these pros are gonna be sitting there telling you that you need to use this specific thing, but you are not good enough to do that. You have to understand this. I would recommend looking decks up that pros are using or looking decks up on Royale API that are having success and have had success for a long time. You need to be looking for decks that have high results for it. These decks include like Golem, Lava Hounds, Evo Recruits, or something like Giant Graveyard even. Decks that are pretty easy to use, that even if you don't use them as well as someone like a pro would do, you're still going to have success. I would recommend that you go on Royale API, filter by Grand Challenge wins, and include cards that you want to use, like include the win conditions that you want to use, and then pick a deck on there that has had success over the past at least 28 days. I'd prefer you to pick decks that have had success longer than that, but 28 days should be fine. And then once you get that deck, once you master that deck, you stick with it. You don't switch them every single month. The only situation that I would say that you can switch your deck is if there is a new evolution that you know would fit in your deck better like Hog Rider Earthquake. You're going to want to switch that Evolved Firecracker over the regular Firecracker. Or if you're still using the Archer Queen Giant Skeleton version, you need to switch over to the Mighty Miner Evolved Firecracker version. It is very clearly better and you will have more success in the long run if you were to make that small little tweak. Outside of changes like that, you do not change your deck. If you do not switch your deck, you're gonna have way more success in the long term and you are going to look back on your former self and thank you every single day. My second tip is to manage your tilting. One of the most difficult things to do is keep yourself under control when you're trying to push ladder or to get to that 12 win grand challenge. One of the biggest obstacles that you have is yourself. It is very difficult to keep yourself from taking one loss and turning it into three because we all know the times where you lost a game by 50 health while your arrows were going towards the tower. We have all had that happen. We, we, we know your pain, but at the same time, we know that once we are mad, we play games drastically worse. And once you carry over that anger into the next game, there's no way you're going to be playing near as well. You need to make sure that you're either taking breaks, you need to make sure that you are in the right mindset before you play. This might sound very corny when I say it, but it's completely true. Your mindset, even in a video game, especially a mobile video game, actually matters. And I hope you take this into account because it is very huge for your long-term success in Clash Royale. My third tip is to learn every single small niche interaction inside of your deck. You should know every small thing that could change for your deck. For example, when you are playing against a bowler and you have a fisherman in your deck, you should know exactly where to place your fisherman 
to pull that bowler towards and activate your own king tower. You should also know things like when you are playing with a bowler that you can take out an entire goblin barrel with the bowler without any damage. You should know every single one of these small interactions. Over time, you're going to play against all currently 120 cards in the game. That includes all the evolutions, that includes every single regular small card. You should know how every single one of those interactions will change depending on timing, depending on placement, and everything involved. This might sound boring and this might sound very difficult, but playing enough games over time will get you to this point. This is why you never switch your deck. Like I said a while ago, if you switch your deck every single month, you're never going to get to the point that you know all these small interactions. You're never going to get to the point that you see all these pros playing at. All these pros know every single small interaction. If you go and watch Riley or Ian, you're going to see those guys do some crazy plays or know exactly what their opponent is going to do before they do it. That's because Ian has played Hog Rider since the beginning of the game and Riley has played Log Bait since the beginning of the game. Why does Riley know where to put his princess and exactly what time to place his princess? Well, he knows it because he's played that deck 40,000 times. That is why you have to do the same exact thing. You have to know that an ice spirit against another ice spirit, if you place it at the specific tile that needs to be placed, at the specific time that it needs to be placed, it gets no damage. That is 100 damage saved and you have a full health ice spirit coming back the other way. That is 100 damage saved and 100 damage on their tower. That is a 200 damage swing that you would have never had if you didn't know that interaction. My fourth tip is to understanding how important timing is. This can apply to both challenges and path the legends. In Path of Legends, you have to understand to get your top 10k finish, you have to understand when to play your games. If you didn't know this, you're placing the ultimate champion dependent on what your win percentage was in Masters and Champions League. This means if you play earlier in the season, you're most likely going to be playing much better players when they are also on their way up to ultimate champion. If you play later in the season, you're going to be played with the leftover players that have not made it all the way up there yet. This means that the odds are that you're going to be playing a much worse player every single game when you play later in the season than you are right at the beginning. This can also apply to things like global tournaments. You gotta know that when you're playing either right at the beginning or right at the end of the tournament, you're gonna either be playing a much worse or much better player. Even if you're playing right at the beginning, the pool of players is just drastically higher. The pool is filled with more great players and it's filled with more terrible players because everyone just wants to play right at the beginning of the tournament. I mean, it's new, right? And if you're playing more towards the end of the tournament, most likely most of the great players are already higher up in the tournament. So you're probably not going to be playing those better players right at the beginning. You have to understand that you're playing a game of statistics and you're trying to find the worst players to play against because you want to push yourself up. You're probably not going to be a pro and you have to understand that. The odds of you beating a regular player are much higher than you beating a pro. So why would you not make it easier on yourself and just play towards the end of the season and play towards the end of the tournament just to make it easier on yourself? My fifth tip is to learn how to count elixir and how to know your opponent's cycle. One of the most important things in Clash Royale is to know what cards your opponent has in their hand and how much elixir they have. This can totally change the tide of a game, especially if you're playing some kind of bait or cycle deck. If you are playing a bait deck and you know that your opponent's counter is out of hand, you get to spam your win condition, you get to spam cycle troops at the bridge and completely destroy them because you know there's no way that they can stop it. If they don't have log in hand, you throw your goblin barrel at the tower. If they don't have tornado in hand, your hog rider is going straight down that lane. You're taking their tower and there's nothing they can do about it. One of the most infuriating things that I see when I watch you guys play is that you guys just mindlessly spam your win condition down the lane when you should know that your opponent has a hard counter in their hand. The opponent has a tornado. Why are you just randomly throwing your hog rider down the lane? That is a negative one trade and it's gonna do absolutely nothing because you can't get damage later on in the attack because you don't have your hog rider and they are completely in cycle. Being able to count elixir can do the same thing, but it could do even more. It means that you should know that you can play a certain defensive card because you know that they can't get to a lightning. If they only have three elixir and you know that, you know that they can't put a lightning down so you can put your musketeer in a certain spot. You can put your cannon in the correct spot. It, it's just much easier to be able to defend if you know that they have a certain amount of elixir or not. My sixth tip is to track your progress with both challenges and path of legends. Something that infuriates me so much 
is when someone says something along the lines of, I'm at 8,000 trophies. I know that the wizard is overpowered. I played with the wizard the entire time through and I just beat everyone with it. Well, I'm gonna be completely honest and in the nicest way possible, who cares? This is because of how the trophy road is set up. Over time, trophies mean less and less. This is because there's no season reset with trophies. This tends to lead to trophies becoming insanely inflated. 9,000 trophies right now is not as important as 9,000 trophies three months ago. This is not the same with Path of Legends and Challenges. In Path of Legends, there is a season reset, meaning that everyone's trophies go away and we all restart. This means that you have to climb the ladder up the same way that everyone else does for that specific month. A top 10K finish in Path of Legends might be slightly easier when there is less players, but it's still pretty similar and not quite like the Trophy Road is. In Trophy Road, you might be playing dead players, you might be playing players that are just straight up trash because they made it there seasons ago and they just restarted. This isn't the same with Path of Legends. If you're in the top 10k, you're in the top 10k of players right now. The challenges, this is even more true. When you're playing in grand challenges, you're playing the bottom of the barrel or the best of the game. You should know by the end of that with how many wins you have in a grand challenge where you line up on this. If you keep on getting two or three wins in a grand challenge, try a classic challenge. Classic challenges are much easier and you might be playing only one or two players in the top 10k along the way. This is much more reasonable for a casual player to win or at least get higher up into the challenge. If you can't win a classic challenge, just gauge by how many wins you get in the challenge. Yes, the quality of player that you're gonna be playing against will vary. I'm not gonna say it doesn't, but over time, you should know that you're a three win classic challenge player or you're a 10 win classic challenge player. It's pretty easy to tell because over time, you yourself know. You might tell your friends that you get more wins, but you know where you line up on that. And over time, you should be getting better. And if you're not, well, maybe you need to change something. My seventh tip is to either join a clan or just watch better players. This is pretty self-explanatory. You need to be watching players that are better than you to get better. Pro players are going to be able to give you tips or you're at least going to pick up on tendencies of like where to play this card when something is coming. You know when I said a while ago about know your niche interactions? These pro players are going to know every single niche interaction for their deck. They're going to know where to put that lumberjack when that goblin gang is coming down the lane. They're going to know where to put that ice spirit when the evolved skeletons are coming down the lane. They're going to know every single thing about their deck. You can pick up on these tendencies and you can use those same exact tricks in your own game and I promise you, you will get better. One piece of advice that I would have is if you are watching a pro player, think about what you would do in that situation before the pro does. And if the pro does something different, you need to figure out why they did that differently. If you can figure out why they did that differently, like is it because of a cycle problem or just a location problem or an elixir counting problem, you gotta understand and it will make you drastically better if you understand that in the end. As for clans, if you join a clan, you're going to be able to talk to pro players like, why did you do this? Or they'll even let you play against them every once in a while and they can show you tips and tricks of what you did wrong. You just gotta leave your ego to the side and actually sit back and listen and watch to what they're doing. I know this is Clash Royale, you might be playing kids that are younger than you, but you have to be able to listen, you have to be able to learn, and if you want to become a better player, you're going to have to understand that people are going to have to teach you what you're doing, you're just not going to pick it up straight up on your own. My eighth and final tip is for you to understand that you are not near as good as you think you are. Even someone like me that is probably better than a large majority of the viewers, I have to understand that I am not near as good as some of the pro players. I'm not going to know every single small interaction that they know, and I have to put my ego aside and watch and learn, or I'm never going to get better. Just think about this. You might think that you're getting hard countered every single time you play, but in all reality, do you really think if Mo Light was in the same exact situation as you, do you really think he would have lost that game? I'm going to be real. Probably not. Mo Light would have won that game very easily, and it's because he counted Elixir correctly. He put every single card in the right position. He was able to get his cycle in a position that he had a counter every single time your win condition was in your hand. He knew exactly what he was doing, and he made no mistakes. This is something that I can promise you every single one of you do. You all make mistakes. I make mistakes. Lucid makes mistakes. My mom makes mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes in Clash Royale. 
you have to understand that you have to grow and you are not the best player in the game. Be able to learn and figure your crap out or you're never going to get better.